Star Wars unfolds in a realm where a prophecy foretells of the arrival of a child born of the Force, destined to bring balance to it. The chosen one in the Star Wars universe is, of course, Anakin Skywalker. Anakin's birth, almost resembling an immaculate conception, immediately aligns him with a figure akin to Jesus, a being born of the very essence of the universe, serving as an avatar of its will in many respects. However, even the chosen one, Anakin Skywalker, succumbs to the temptations of the dark side. And though ultimately redeemed, as Darth Vader, he takes countless innocent lives, sparing neither Jedi nor non-Jedi. So if even the prophesied chosen one can fall to the dark side, and become nearly irredeemably corrupted, what hope does Balin Skull hold on Peridia? Balin, while experienced and wise in his own ways, faces the daunting question of whether he can control or withstand the immense power he seeks without succumbing to the same fate as Anakin, or worse, becoming a monstrous entity consumed by force energies never meant for mortals to wield. Whether or not he awakens Abeloth, Balin may only bring about destruction. Hello there, I'm Noctigal, and today I want to delve into the folly of Balin School's quest for power which he refers to as both the beginning and the future. I'll analyze Balin's dialogue in the Ahsoka show, the hints he drops about what he seeks on Peridia, and how his mythological connections could play a significant role in the unfolding story. If you find this discussion intriguing, consider subscribing, and let's dive right in. We don't yet have much information about Balin's skull. While other characters in the Star Wars universe have extensive lore from both canon and legends, Balin is introduced in the Ahsoka show so this is our primary source of information. Balin doesn't get as much screen time as one might expect, especially considering the recent passing of the actor Ray Stevenson, who brought this character to life. Stevenson's performance was exceptional, and all of his fans are hopeful that Lucasfilms can find a way to honor his memory by concluding Balin's story respectfully. What we do know about Balin is that he is a former Jedi who left the Order sometime around the Clone Wars. And while not much is known about Maroke, Balin does appear to have been collaborating with an Inquisitor. Balin has also trained an apprentice named Shin Hati, whom he is preparing to be more than just a Jedi. However, it remains unclear what Balin means by this, especially since Shin still appears fairly inexperienced. Even Sabine, who's considered a less than ideal Jedi candidate, can hold her own against Shin in lightsaber combat. On the other hand, Balin is a formidable opponent, and Ahsoka struggles to face him during their encounters, both on Cetos and on Peridia. Despite wearing a darker attire, Balin wields an orange lightsaber, a subtle yet potentially important detail. Creating the color orange is an intricate process that involves the fusion of two distinct hues, red and yellow. This phenomenon piques my curiosity, as it could potentially allude to Balin's relentless pursuit of equilibrium within the Force or perhaps a source of power that might enable him to break the cycle perpetuated by both the Jedi and the Sith. What captivates me even more is the subtle but profound significance of lightsaber colors, an aspect seldom explored and sometimes even marginalized within the current canon. These iconic lightsabers, their shades acting as visual markers, whisper profound truths about their bearers. For instance, the resplendent blue lightsabers symbolize the valiant Jedi Guardians, Masters of lightsaber combat, who embody righteousness and valor. Think of luminaries such as Anakin, Obi-Wan, or even Ezra Bridger. In contrast, the soothing green lightsabers identify Jedi Consulars, venerable figures of goodwill and harmony within the Jedi Order. These individuals, often esteemed and wise, include luminaries like Luke Skywalker, Qui-Gon Jinn, and the revered Yoda. The radiant yellow lightsabers are emblematic of Jedi Temple Guardians, individuals who have dedicated themselves with exceptional skill and unwavering loyalty to the Jedi Order. A unique position is held by the enigmatic orange lightsabers, signifying the Jedi Sentinels, whose expertise straddles the domains of both Guardians and Consulars. They are adept not only in lightsaber combat, but also in the delicate art of diplomacy. On the opposing end of the spectrum, we find the ominous red lightsabers, unmistakably linked to the Sith. These crimson blades are an unmistakable declaration of allegiance to the dark side of the Force. However, there exists yet another intriguing interpretation of the orange lightsaber, one that warrants special attention. 
These rare weapons often find themselves in the hands of Grey Jedi, those who have achieved a delicate balance between the light and dark sides of the Force. This interpretation undoubtedly aligns with the multifaceted character of Balin. Moreover, this aligns well with the Jedi Sentinel description as well, as Balin can see in both being an expert at combat as well as diplomacy. Balin's character exemplifies a balance between the light and dark sides of the Force. He channels the dark side during his battle with Ahsoka on Cetos, but holsters his lightsaber when negotiating with Sabine, appealing to her emotions. Balin fulfills his promise to Sabine, ensuring her safety and assisting her in finding Ezra with Thrawn's help. However, he is aware that Sabine's survival is uncertain once she locates Ezra, as he only promised her safety and access to Ezra, not guaranteed protection afterward. The final scene in which Balin stands atop the father statue, with only the son statue remaining intact, does hint at his balance, albeit with a slight lean toward the dark side. This might suggest that Balin is a flawed chosen one, someone who believes he can assume the role of the father, a being responsible for maintaining balance in the Force, who may ultimately become corrupted or release a calamity upon the galaxy. Many speculate that Anakin Skywalker has already assumed a role similar to the father, possibly as the singular one or god of Mortis. Anakin's appearance and abilities within the world between worlds does seem to support this theory. While it hasn't been explicitly confirmed that Anakin has taken on this role, his memory does align with what he should remember, and his manipulation of the light and dark sides of the Force, along with his connection to the world between worlds, strongly suggests a new purpose for him. If Anakin has already claimed the position of the father, Balin's ambitions might be in vain. Anakin in some form, though, could potentially attempt to thwart Balin from continuing his perilous path, either as a Force ghost as we have already seen him as on Peridia, or perhaps in the world between worlds or Mortis itself. So what exactly is Balin seeking? I've touched on this subject before on my channel, and I believe that Balin is searching for the Force nexuses known as the Font of Power and the Pool of Knowledge, Abeloth, or perhaps a gateway to Mortis itself. In Legends, these Force Nexuses provided the Ones or Gods of Mortis with their affinities and Force alignments. Considering that the Clone Wars series introduced the Ones into canon, it's reasonable to assume that the Force Nexuses are now part of the canon as well. We've already seen something reminiscent of these Nexuses during the Mortis arc, where the Sun tapped into the Dark Side well, a potent source of the Dark Side of the Force within the planet. This suggests that the Font of Power and the Pool of Knowledge could make an appearance in the upcoming Star Wars content likely in the next season of Ahsoka or whatever else Dave Filoni decides to put out. These nexuses were said to bestow unlimited power and knowledge about the galaxy's past, future, and secrets. If these nexuses are on Peridia, they align perfectly with Balin's quest. When discussing the Force nexuses and the ones of Mortis, it's crucial to mention Abeloth, also known as the Mother in Legends. In this lore, the Mother was a servant of the Ones on their home planet, where the Font of Power and the Pool of Knowledge were located. Over time, she became known as the Mother, mediating disputes among the Ones, especially between the Son and Daughter, but she had a special connection with the Son, who embodied the Dark Side. The Mother, unlike the Ones, was mortal, and sought to become immortal like them. To achieve this, she consumed from the Font of Power and bathed in the Pool of Knowledge, which corrupted her and transformed her into a dark, twisted being. Abeloth. As Abeloth, she became a chaotic force entity with both light and dark side powers, representing a twisted balance in the force. While the sun was connected to the dark side, he wasn't completely consumed by it, unlike Abeloth, who wreaked havoc and chaos, distorting everything around her. Her power surpassed that of the ones, leading the father to flee with his children, fulfilling Abeloth's fear of loneliness, something she ultimately brought upon herself. With the background now said, I'm uncertain about the extent to which elements from the legends will be integrated. Nevertheless, even if only the Font of Power and the Pool of Knowledge find their way into the narrative, they could still herald chaos for Balin and the rest of the galaxy. If Balin's pursuit is driven by the Force Nexuses, it's possible he has noble intentions, but the consequences of his actions may be dire. Early in the season, Ahsoka tells Sabine, sometimes even the right reasons have the wrong consequences. What do we do then? While this wasn't about Balin at that moment, the sentiment strongly resonates with his mission. His goal is noble, as he seeks to end the suffering and destruction perpetuated by the Jedi and Sith. In a way, much like Kylo Ren, 
Balin desires to erase the past. However, his hubris could be his undoing. As mentioned previously, not even Anakin, the Chosen One himself, could resist the temptation of the Dark Side. Given that I believe Balin is already leaning toward the Dark Side, his interaction with the Force Nexuses may not yield a positive outcome. It's not as though Balin can raise the dead or harness powers comparable to the Night Sisters. So what makes him think he can wield this greater power he believes the Night Sisters are avoiding? Perhaps Balin foolishly believes he comprehends what lies on this planet, and how to harness it better than those who have resided here, such as the Night Sisters. When the antagonists arrive on Cetos, Balin's query about whether the map leads to Peridia hints at his awareness of what Peridia is and what it might hold. Initially, Balin may be hesitant to believe it's real, perhaps because it seems too fantastical to be true. When describing Peridia, Balin says, This is a land of dreams and madness. Children's stories come to life. Stories of this galaxy are considered folktales. Some ancient past, long forgotten. This suggests that Peridia is something that all Jedi younglings would have learned about, possibly hinting at a connection between the origins of the Jedi and the planet itself. Though Balin doesn't delve into the specifics of these stories, it's likely they are adapted versions of Legends material, much like Thrawn and the Ones of Mortis. The connection to the Ones of Mortis solidifies the possibility that Balin's knowledge ties to them. The only details Balin shares about the power of Peridia is his pursuit of a new beginning, power beyond imagination. When Shin dismisses these stories as mere tales, Balin reveals a personal connection recounting a moment from his past when he witnessed everything he knew being destroyed unable to make sense of it at the time. He suggests that as one grows older and studies history, patterns of the fall of the Jedi and the rise of the Empire repeat themselves, over and over and over. He asserts that the power he seeks is the key to ending this cycle, and when Shin inquires if this beginning is located on Peridia, Balin's response is cryptic, if the old stories are true. So, what are these old stories? As I just mentioned, they are likely adaptations of legend stories or events and appear to be linked to the Ones of Mortis in some way. Whatever is hidden on Peridia, Balin sees it as both the beginning and the future. He believes that the Jedi Order offered him no future, yet he envisions a future here on Peridia. In the Clone Wars, when Anakin is just first conversing with a daughter, she states that they represent the past, present, and future, which may be another subtle connection hinting at what Balin seeks. Furthermore, Balin had no intention of working with Thrawn. His sole purpose, as he informs Ahsoka, is to secure the future. When Ahsoka questions if he's doing it for himself, Balin claims it's for something greater. This causes Ahsoka to label him as ambitious, but Balin corrects her, stating it's necessary. Furthermore, he rationalizes his actions, claiming I'm not starting a war, but Thrawn will. It is an unfortunate evil, but it speaks to a greater truth one must destroy to create. Balin's utilitarian outlook means he believes the ends justify the means. If unleashing Thrawn upon the galaxy is the price he must pay to find Peridia, he seems willing to accept it. Moreover, he may even believe he can defeat Thrawn once he acquires the power others have shunned. Balin's conviction about destroying to create echoes the Clone Wars Mortis arc as well, where the sun representing the dark side destroys to enable the daughter representing the light side to create. However, Balin's focus on his desired outcome could lead to destruction alone. Unless the stories he knows are connected to the Force Nexuses and the origins of Force abilities, which could explain his confidence. Balin's ambition drives him to believe he can be more than the Jedi and the Sith, despite not being the Chosen One, a child of the Force, or a Mortis God. His arrogance leads him to think that he should or can bring balance to the Force. Ahsoka appears to have a better claim to become a Mortis God or interacting with the Font of Power or Pool of Knowledge, whereas Balin is simply a former Jedi trying to be a Grey Jedi in a practical sense. Yet he sees himself as the Chosen One and embarks on this journey alone, not even inviting Shin to accompany him. This could be attributed to a mysterious Force that seems to call to him. Throughout the series, Balin gazes at the sky as if drawn by an invisible force, even asking Shin if she senses what stirs on the planet. However, no one acknowledges the presence of another great power on Peridia, at least not one that calls to them in such a way. This suggests that something is specifically calling to Balin, 
stroking his ego and fostering his belief that he can wield this immense power to end the cycle of the Jedi and the Sith. This entity that calls to Balin may be linked to his noble intentions, but also to his hubris. Balin perceives himself as something beyond the Jedi and the Sith, making him susceptible to an entity like Abeloth, which is also beyond the Sith and the Jedi. Abeloth could represent the beginning, as the Mortis gods may have fled Peridia's galaxy for the main Star Wars galaxy, as this may be the original homeworld of the Ones of Mortis, a corrupted world acting as her prison. Moreover, in Legends, Abeloth stirs and is freed when there are major ships in the Force, and perhaps the echoes of the Ones of Mortis dying, along with events such as Luke Skywalker defeating the Sith, have begun to awaken the Queen of the Stars. The entity stirring on Peridia terrifies even the Night Sisters, who possess the power to raise the dead, bestow force abilities, and conjure physical objects. This reinforces the idea that Balin seeks an entity akin to Abeloth, which fits well with the hints dropped in the first season. The connection to the Night Sisters and possibly the Zepho further strengthens the link to Abeloth, as these races appear to have been corrupted by the influence of the Dark Side at some point. And much like a Lovecraftian Elder God, Abeloth can influence and drive individuals mad, calling out to their minds from afar and compelling them to join her. Balin has been summoned from another galaxy to Peridia, believing that what calls to him can break the cycle of the Sith and the Jedi. He may not be entirely wrong, as Abeloth of the Force Nexuses themselves could possess the power to do so, to bring an end to the cycle of the Jedi and the Sith. And while Abeloth did briefly align with the Sith in Legends, the Sith ultimately joined forces with the Jedi to battle Abeloth back, meaning Abeloth is an enemy to everyone, and in that aspect, acts as a unifying force rather than a destructive one. Thus, it makes sense for an entity like her to reinforce Balin's belief that he can end the Sith-Jedi cycle. She ultimately seeks destruction, which aligns with Balin's goals, though not necessarily in the way he intends, as Balin would ideally hope to create with his newfound power as well. Though, Abeloth is often referred to as the Bringer of Chaos, and for good reason. Her abilities extend beyond the ordinary, capable of driving individuals to madness or even causing them to spontaneously combust, certainly abilities you would not want unleashed upon the galaxy. One of Abeloth's primary and favorite talents, however, is possession, and this raises the question of whether Balin could be vulnerable to such an ordeal. There's ample precedent for this in Legends, as Abeloth nearly conquered the galaxy by possessing a senator. While it might not be explicitly labeled as Abeloth, there's a compelling possibility that Balin will inadvertently release something dreadfully dangerous, an entity poised to corrupt, kill, or possess him. Just as Abeloth draws her victims into her web by reaching out to their minds, it appears that Balin is similarly ensnared. As the series progresses, Balin's tunnel vision becomes increasingly narrow, as he fixates on what he calls to him, even at the expense of his confrontation with Ahsoka. Much like Abeloth, he might be unable to escape his fate, already in the clutches of the mysterious force that beckons him. Despite believing he's on a path to a greater good, the road to hell is often paved with good intentions. While it's improbable that Balin will become the father, as that role was offered to Anakin Skywalker, the Chosen One, it's plausible that Abeloth is the force calling to Balin. Balin's ambition drives him to pursue this original source of power, despite the risk of being led astray. He seeks to step into the shoes of the Chosen One, even though he hasn't been designated as such. This makes the allure of an entity that embodies false balance like Abeloth fitting for his quest. Anakin never willingly chose to be the Chosen One, and refused the role of the Father when asked, but he ultimately became one with the Force and perhaps took on a new role in the world between worlds. Balin, on the other hand, is driven by ambition and a sense of necessity. If the prospect of preventing the death of a loved one could sway Anakin toward the dark side, the encounter with an entity like Abeloth or the interaction with the Font of Power or the Pool of Knowledge could have dire consequences for Balin. His pursuit aims to end the entire cycle of the Jedi and Sith, rather than averting a single death. The power he seeks surpasses anything we've encountered thus far, and many individuals have considered themselves invincible when presented with lesser power. Balin's noble intentions may lead him to unintended consequences. What actions can be taken then? Balin's quest has a profound sense of irony, as he seeks to terminate the current cycle, 
only to potentially set a new one in motion. In the sequel trilogy, the Jedi and Sith have dwindled and are barely recognizable, seemingly bringing an end to the cycle, at least for a time being. However, Balin's actions might spark a new cycle with the emergence of Abeloth. Abeloth, who is nearly immortal and consistently returns after being defeated in Legends, perpetuates a cycle of imprisonment, escape, and re-imprisonment. With the ones Immortus now deceased, who will be there to confront a cosmic entity like Abeloth? While there might be theories about this, it appears to be a bleak situation, without significant intervention. Can Ahsoka and Sabine effectively contain or imprison a force as formidable as Abeloth? Even though Ahsoka has a connection to the daughter, Balin remains unaware of this fact. As far as we know, Balin has no backup plan in case he can't contain or wield the power that which he yearns for. Absolute power is often said to corrupt absolutely, and it's challenging to envision an outcome other than Balin's eventual fall in this quest for power. And to make a brief connection to mythology, within Norse mythology, the wolf's skull, which Balin's skull is based on, chases the sun with the intent to consume it, marking the onset of Ragnarok, the end of everything. Could this relate to him consuming from the font of power, bathing in the pool of knowledge, confronting Mortis gods of some sort, seeking out Anakin, perhaps unleashing Abeloth? Who knows? Similarly, Balin Skull seeks a golden power off in the distance, and when Balin Skull ultimately reaches his destination, what fate awaits? Will he usher in ruin, or a cataclysm akin to Ragnarok? Is Balin's skull the true bringer of chaos? Thank you.